Hello everyone, and welcome to another video. This is going to be a playthrough of the Inverted Fate, Alfie's Fight, created by Philip Lowell with writing by me. It's a pretty intense fight with a lot of different options. There's many endings, probably about a dozen other Easter eggs that can pop up. It's a game where you're definitely encouraged to play multiple times in one session if you want to see a bunch of different outcomes and goodies. I'll have a link in the description, as well as a link to the Metaton Spiral fight he created. Likewise, I'll have a card up here for the commentated playthrough I did of Metaton's fight. But for now, let's get started, and let's hope the lag machine doesn't get us. Ooh. So this part comes from the end of Inverted Fate Part 25, but now it's in motion. called Duty Bound by Jimmy the Bassist. <laughs> sequence was originally animated by Mildred. Uh, she did the overlay art, the crossbow turning on, the close-ups on Alfie's face, and it was excellent. Mildred used to do a lot of gifts for Inverted Fate. She did the uh, papyrus dramatic jumping in Fort Aquarius. I might have that on the corner of the screen when I go into editing, just to kind of show you real quick. Um, now this song here is actually heavily, heavily influenced by the music of Bravely Default. Specifically the song that plays in the first VR cutscene with Anyez talking about Oh, how disastrous things are, how she needs her warrior of light. If you know nothing about Bravely Default, this will probably sound like gibberish to you. But hey, good game! It's on the 3DS, go play it! start. So there's a few things I want to point out before we get started. Uh, first of all, you'll notice Alfie's looks kind of small, and that's because she's supposed to be out in the distance. She's standing on top of that little miniature peak, so she's not really accessible, and if you tried to fight her, you wouldn't be able to hit her because of this. The background animation is amazing, and it was done by Phil as he was working on the fight. Alphys' sprites were done by me, with a little help from Fours on the hands and crossbow. 
The music is Wavering Spirit, which I have on this channel. I'll put that in the top right corner for those who want to listen to it later. And uh, now then, we should probably get started. Now, normally I would start this fight with a check, but just for people who might be wanting to pose themselves, what you should always do at the start of this fight is compliment. It'll make Alfie's attacks deal two damage per hit, and that is so much easier to deal with with some of her attacks coming up. Now, Papyrus has a few options. He can use blue attack, and it serves two purposes. In the normal turns, you'll place two blue bones to block bullets. It's not his most OP spell, but it can come in handy if you expect certain projectiles to come from a direction and you want to give yourself a little extra cushioning. Bone Barrier is kind of like the shield in Undyne's fight where you can block projectiles. You control it with WASD and it can reflect up to two projectiles before it breaks. Bone Barrage is kind of a gamble because you get a lot of little bones that scroll and sweep through the battle box and delete enemy attacks. But if you touch them, you get one hit of damage per contact. It's kind of a bit of a risk reward. Concocterus though, is the definition of risk and reward. It is a gamble. Every time you use it, it rolls a random number generator, and you can get stat up, stat downs, healing, damage, a bunch of weird and useless effects. It's worth it if you're willing to take a risk, but I would say if you're not feeling confident, tread carefully. Now then, as for his act commands, so, Papyrus can also check, and that'll give a different and unique flavor text. Distract will temporarily distract Alfie's, lowering her accuracy. Contemplate basically tells you what to do, and any act command for Frisk or Papyrus that's highlighted in yellow is what you want to do to advance the fight and get closer to her spare condition. So I'll start with reasoning. So this attack is a little tricky, so these rocks kind of limit how much space you have, but then these seeker arrows come down, and the trick is to kind of redirect them and then dodge. They're kind of a pain though, because they like to keep coming back. So now you want to redirect them at Alphys' crossbow. These are probably the harder attacks to do that to. Oh hey, I actually got two, that's pretty good. Okay, so Frisk can check, challenge, compliment, talk, or flirt. Right now, talk isn't going to do anything. Challenge will make her harder. Compliment can be used up to two times and is really highly recommended. Flirt will lower her accuracy for a couple of times. I'm going to compliment again and you'll see why in a moment. So now her attacks are going to be slower and easier to deal with. I love this part. Also, one thing I love about Papyrus is he has a status bar and it changes depending on what's happening in the fight. So that's a fun little bit of extra text. Alright, so now we're in yellow mode, and that works just like it did in Undertale. You can shoot projectiles. Only now we got Seeker Arrows coming back for vengeance. You could try and steer these at the crossbow. It's a little tricky with all these rocks, so sometimes it's better to just dodge them. Okay, so now that we've done her compliments, let's do check just so you can see. So here's a fun fact, her stats are actually the inverse of Undyne, who had attack 50 and defense 20. Alright, so I'm gonna do reasoning for just a little bit more, I think. Just to get it out of the way.
So if you haven't read Inverted Fate, some of this might seem a little weird. Alfie's, unlike Undyne in the original Undertale, is a lot more conflicted. She's kind of putting on a metaphorical mask and trying to act like this very cold, aloof leader who's willing to put the people before her personal interests, but it's really hurting her inside. And Metaton and Sans have both kind of tried to coax her out of that, but she's not doing it so easily. Okay, now, I like these ones. The yellow arrows are the easiest way to weaken Alfie's crossbow. Because you can just shoot them, and that'll weaken her crossbow. So, okay. Now, hmm. I don't really have anything I need to do as Frisk right now. But I will show you what happens when you try to attack her, even though I'm not going to betrayal kill her. Here's what happens. Watch. You can't, because she's too far away. <laughs> Rubber suits. Hindsight stinks! I love Papyrus. Uh, this is a little bit harder, because you have to keep in mind that there's these colored lightnings. Okay, we did actually nerf some of her attacks to make it a little easier. Okay, so here's a little thing you can do now. Papyrus has to kind of open her up a bit, and then you can start talking to her as Chris. Okay, so we have a few different options. All of them are mandatory to uh, beat the fight. You can choose them in any order you want, but just so you know, Humans is recommended to be saved for a turn where you're on low health and need to heal because Papyrus does not have a follow-up for that one. So save Humans for when you really need to buff or heal. Watch out, because this turn has a lot going on. Oh, sweet! Here we go. So this is a key part of progression in Alfie's fight. If you try to talk to her while she's like this, this is what will happen. Okay, so what you want to do is blue attack to progress, but I recommend starting up a bone barrier first. And the reason for this is because it'll make the next, ah, uh, flip. I'll try it again. That was a bad play on my part, so let me just try this again. I could do this without barrier. I like the little extra cushion it gives you, though. Especially because you can just shoot the projectiles. This attack is super easy to deal with. So setting up a bone barrier can make this next part a lot simpler. Okay, so now we're gonna enter the blue phase. So you want to be very careful during the platforming segment, because there's a lightning bolt. It wants to turn you yellow again, and that would mean you'd have to turn blue again. It's just Alpheus is trying to kind of keep you from getting closer. I messed up my jump. Okay, let's do this again. Hey, at least that shows you what happens if you mess up the blue check segment. I really do like this part, though. It was so awesome to see the idea in the comic kind of fleshed out. And you gotta touch the flag to progress. 
Okay, so spare. I guess I can show you what Concopterus does. It's a bit of a risk, but let's do Concopterus just so you guys can see what kind of stuff can happen. Oh, that one sucks. Dang it, that's gonna really make this fight harder. But then again, I did warn you guys. Now, if you watch earlier videos of this fight, there were actually some issues with some of the bullets where they just kind of get stuck to platforms or not move at all. That has since been fixed, and a lot of the attacks have been kind of toned down. Alright, so now we're in the next phase. Uh, I kind of want to reconcocturist again, even though it's a little risky, but... Oh, jeez, I... Do I do that? Uh, let's talk for now. Probably manage one more turn before I need to heal. unlocks a new dialogue prompt. Okay, this is a little tricky, but I'm doing okay. So you want to kind of avoid hovering on the exclamation points for too long. Alright, so this is a good turn, I think, to just heal. I'm going to use the bicycle. Let's do another concocterist just for fun. Ooh, that's awesome! <laughs> wowie, wowie, wowie! Oh my gosh! I've never seen that concocterist effect. Holy cow! <laughs> oh my gosh! That's amazing! <laughs> Holy cow, this is incredible! And then I'm taking damage because I'm an idiot. Oh, I hope that that was cool. I actually got surprised by something in this fight. That's really neat. Okay, so I'm gonna show you what I do. Okay. That was pretty awesome. Okay, so we're gonna get a speed boost. Okay, we're getting closer to shorting out her crossbow again, I think. Okay, this attack is really hitting with the bullets, though. Okay. 
got her guard lowered. That's good. Okay, this is another good turn to heal. I don't want to use up all of my heals too fast, but okay. Okay. Mm. I'll do another barrier. And then I broke it. Oh well, still better than nothing. bad button input on my part. Invincibility decrease is gonna last the rest of the fight too, so that gives us a little bit of a handicap. I am just a damage sponge. Okay, so this shield is currently yellow. That means it's max defense right now. And I'm pretty low on heals. So I'll use the nice thing for now. Okay, I'm gonna use barrier again. Even though I think I still had it. So what you would normally do is just shoot these arrows at the shield, but because her defense is up, and you know what, I'm going to do this anyway. Uh, 
this is a risk. Okay, so even though... So like, even though I didn't do Papyrus' Reason Chain, her shield is now vulnerable, which is why I healed even though... I'm still gonna do Papyrus' Response, because I do like to show all the dialogue, it's just... So this is nice because there's so many arrows coming in, it's... This is probably the easiest phase to hit, and that's why she has that vulnerabil invulnerability. Okay, so I don't have to do anything with Frisk, so I'm going to spare, but let's do Reasoning. Alright, so this kind of sucks. Good for flipping Seeker Arrows that I hate. At least, uh, yeah, not a big fan of this attack, honestly. There's a lot to keep track of. I mean, at least the Seekers are easier to redirect at the shield than they were at the crossbow. Uh, jeez. I know I'm gonna regret this later, since this is my last heal, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Okay, let's do the Bone Barrier. Not a move. Yeah, I'm kind of screwed. I usually do better than this, honestly. Away, Seeker Arrows. Jeez, I thought this attack got toned down. Shoot, 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 shoot. Ah, flip. Well, at least I got to show you a game over, but what an awful place to get one. Oh boy. Okay, so... That's mildly embarrassing. That I had so many hiccups. I think what I might end up doing is just skip to when I'm back on phase three, but first I'll show you what happens when you reload. Alright, so, hmm, you know what, I'll show you a few more things before I skip ahead, just because I didn't show you all of what Papyrus can do. So for example, I'm gonna do my compliment strategy again. Here's Bone Barrage. It's really convenient for scrubbing bullets. It's a less convenient in terms of, like, you have to really be careful where you move. But it is pretty powerful. Okay. Basically, what you can do is you can choose a spot you don't want the bullets to be, 
and you can place them. It's not as powerful as Barrage, but it can be nice. part of the process. I need to pay more attention to these stupid seeker arrows. I don't mean to eat that yet. So I think I might need to show off challenge just because the inaccurate projectiles are making it kind of inconvenient to hit her. Like, it's good for the other attacks, but it's really not great for this. So be very careful when you want to lower accuracy, because there can be problems with it. So I'm gonna challenge... I'll show you Contemplate, too. So that basically is like a hint command. Concocturus. Ooh, that wasn't good. Uh, I still need to up her accuracy, I think.
Okay, so I'm just recording another extra bit because, oh, I got some horrible, horrible luck, and her attacks got faster, and that totally kicked my butt, so I'm just going to show what happens after you lose twice. It's nothing super extravagant, but it just is a way to kind of speed things along as you lose more. So, I'm just going to try and speed through this now, and I'll see you guys again once I'm caught up. Alright, we are back to where we left off. Now, let's see if I can do better this time. Okay, this is just seekers. Shield is getting really weak now, so that's good. Yes. All right, so we are basically in the clear at this point, as long as I don't take damage. I'm out of healing items too. Yep, I'm out of heals. I'm gonna try. 
try and get a full bone berry before I continue? Oh jeez. Ah, screw it. So this music is called The Jig Is Up. It's based on a song from Final Fantasy IX. The nice thing about these blue turns is there's no longer any lightning to turn you yellow again. The only thing to worry about is the falling rocks. Oh, wait. Well, at least that shows you what happens if you use blue attack when you're already blue. of the fight. Now there are two ways to proceed. You can go into your inventory, or you can select the new gift act command. Both are effectively the same thing. I'm going to go to the inventory. Oh yeah, and Alpheus will no longer attack. called Heart to Heart. It's based on Defend Globe from Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. Probably one of the more complex Undertale fanfights, just because there's a lot that goes into finishing it. It's pretty accurate to the comic, though. Like... It 
it's very different from Undyne's because instead of just running her to exhaustion, you actually have to get closer and break through her kind of mask and shield that she put over herself, so to speak. Our boy Sans. So if you haven't read Inverted Fate, you might be wondering, okay, what the heck, why he be wearing armor? Doesn't most of the art of Inverted Fate Sans have a different outfit? The armor is his royal guard uniform that he wears for most of the comic. The outfit you see in a lot of fan art is his early casual clothes that he only wears for the Snowden arc, but he's second in command of the royal guard, so he's got a uniform too. And he's referring to a character, Doge, who is based on a cut character from Undertale. Uh, that whole situation happens in part 20 of the comic. too much. I'm gonna go with Go With Sands because that's what's canon to the comic. And now for a really cool transition. So this song is The Call by Mata. One more detail, the shape of her pupil is meant to be kind of reminiscent of a save point. Anyway, we have our credits. And there's a lot of music, some of it only plays in some of the extra bonus stingers. So this is going to show the first stinger you get, which is based on bonus two, which happens uh, just around the time Sans's fight happens in the comic. So this is like way back closer to like part 12. <laughs> And this song is Captain's Conflict. It's based by another Final Fantasy IX song.
just came to say hello, so yeah, hello from a kitty. I went this approach with Inverted Fate by having little bonuses like this is that I felt that even though we're told Metaton and Alphys are friends in Undertale, we don't get to see a lot of that. And a big goal with Inverted Fate for me was to kind of flesh out the world, flesh out the character dynamics. So there's a lot more interpersonal relationships between monsters, even if it's after their initial debut arc. for the main sequence of events, but there are incentives to replay the fight. If you keep doing pacifist, you get more little calls like this that I will show in the supplementary video that includes some of the extra reload reset options. Actually, yeah, I'll do it in a separate video just because this one's already getting pretty long. I'm thinking what I will do is kind of organize them based on the choices made. So I'll have one that focuses primarily on alternate pacifist stuff, then I'll do the betrayal kill and repeats of that, the flea endings, and then maybe some combo endings. Because there's so many, it's probably going to take a while to get them all out, so you can look forward to that in the near future. But before I want before I go, I want to give a huge thank you to all of my supporters on Patreon right now because they're the ones who really help support me, especially now that my hours at work are cut down. So, huge, huge shout out, especially to my top Patreon supporters, uh, Skolapendra, Shrekrek, and Mafit, Smart Celeste, Nightmare Mangle Trap, Olivia, Joel Salt, uh, Purple War Stormbreaker, Sarah Potter, Dr. Meccano, The Sarcasm, Varisto, Venus Sui, I, I apologize if I mispronounce your name, uh, Wonky, uh, Chocobo, James, just a lot of really cool people who make this all possible. And if I miss reading anyone aloud, I'll have them all listed on the screen. If you want to support me, you can do so by clicking the Patreon link. There should be an option at the end of this video as well as on screen and in the description. I also have a Kofi coffee account for like one-time donations. If you want to see more Inverted Fate, you can go to invertedfate.com to read the comic. And other than that, I'll see you guys in the future.